Welcome to Don't Break Your Life, using a stage, stage anxiety to make your life easier. A lot easier. Jamie Schmidt has been a part of a particular passion for creating excellent content experiences. Originally from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, she has been working as a WordPress freelancer and consultant since 2012. Reg regularly take sites from conception to a well-managed pro uh, build process that encourages communication, planning, and smart use of content. She has a background in information architecture and content strategy, and a big old enthusiasm for all things WordPress. Now living in Portland, Oregon, Jamie is a, a community evangelist for SiteLock, traveling the country and helping build awareness of website security, best practices, and solutions. Let's give a big hand to Jamie Schmidt. Hello. Um, yes, it's true. My name is Jamie Schmidt. Um, I am a community evangelist for SiteLock, and I've been um, doing development uh, for since 2012 um, for clients of all sizes. So from freelance, very small business, to um, working in enterprise. And um, in that time, I have seen sites get hacked, I've seen sites go down, I have um, caused sites to go down, uh, I've fixed both of those things, um, and I've worked in a lot of different development environments. So um, I pretty much learned, um, as many of us eventually do, that having an intermediary site um, in between you and lie is a good idea so that you can have great life. Um, and that's what this talk is about. So first you know, you know that you need to get your site updated. Um, but making updates and changes is dangerous. Uh, if anybody has ever made a, an update online that caused the site to, to go down, you know it's, it's a very bad moment for you or your clients. Um, so, but you need to keep them updated. So, um, updating on a staging site is really the um, ideal way to do it, and especially with 5.0 coming down the pipes um, soon, or relatively soon, um, we're going to be doing a lot of updates for clients. We're going to be updating a lot of our own sites. So knowing how to do something like this is going to come in really handy very soon. Um, so first of all, there's kind of two different directions you can sort of take. Um, one is sort of like the user implementer, and one is like a developer. So I just wanted to kind of ask um, who in here considers themselves either a user where somebody built your site for you or an implementer, which would be maybe you build sites for others, but you don't necessarily do very much code. So who considers themselves that? Okay, a good one. And who is uh, more of a developer, building sites for other people? Okay, actually that's pretty much even. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be doing both. Um, but um, so for the development side of things, that's a very sort of personal um, d opinion and decision that you have on, on development, so I'm not going to go into every single option, but I'm going to go through and, and hopefully get some things to get you thinking and implementing your own staging site. So first, what is a staging site? <clears throat> it's a private copy of your site um, that uh, you can test updates, you can do development on, um, you can uh, do things like install new plugins and themes and all kinds of things in your own private environment where um, the public doesn't see it. So you don't have to worry about, in case you do break something, it's not going to affect your lives. Uh, so when I say staging, or when I say um, maybe like a, a development site, or um, like anything like that, I'm talking about the site nobody sees, and when I say live or production, that means your site that's on the internet that your clients are going to um, and using every day. The one that you really don't want to um, so how does staging site work? There's pretty much three things that it really has to do. Um, make an exact duplicate of your live site, and that's because you want to make sure that you can predict any sort of issues that's going to happen with your live site. Um, you don't want to have different WordPress versions. You don't necessarily want to have different content, different plugins, different themes. You want it to be as close to the live site as possible. Um, and then you make your changes. Maybe you make updates, features, whatever. Uh, and then when those changes are all good, you push it up to the live site, um, knowing that it's probably not going to break. 
So those are just three um, very basic symbol sounding steps. Um, but it's not necessarily that easy. And I know that this talk is how using a staging site can make your life a lot easier. And that's true. But it does take a little bit of a time investment up front to get that whole workflow set up. Um, so there, there's a couple reasons that it's not that easy. And understanding these reasons is going to um, help you make decisions on what your solution is going to be that, um, you know, that you're going to try out and, and to pick the one that's right for you. So when you do changes in WordPress, WordPress has physical files like index.php, and then they also have database files, and that would be um, sitting in your MySQL database on your server. Um, but when you make changes, the changes can um, include both physical files and database changes at the same time. Sometimes it can be just files. Sometimes it can be just database changes. Um, so, um, databases are hard to sync. That's a very important thing to know. Um, for lots of different reasons, uh, WordPress has some specific reasons why it's difficult. Um, WordPress uses static URLs in its database. That means when you um, start a new site, it literally will say www.mysite.com in your database. So if you were to take that exact um, database and plop it into another, another location, like maybe staging.mysite.com, those URLs aren't going to work. You need to go through and change those URLs so that they match the new location. And it's not even that simple either because uh, WordPress also uses serialized data, which means um, basically encoding some of the database entries in a way that um, you will also need to update those in a, in a more involved process. Um, and then also different environments. Uh, the development or the staging environment you're using is not necessarily exactly the same as your live site. Maybe you're using um, a local uh, development kind of solution. That's not necessarily going to be the exact development and the um, server setup that maybe you have on your GoDaddy or WP Engine or whatever you're using. So those are sort of the main things that make this a little bit of a difficult um, solution to put into place that you have to figure out your own answers to those issues as you go. <clears throat> so understanding what is required. Um, getting down to the real basics of what you need in order to accomplish this. You need to have a replica of your live site. You need to put it someplace that it can run as a website. WordPress uses a database, it uses um, MySQL, it uses lots of different um, uh, software that you need basically a server to run. And then you need somehow to get those changes to your live site. So with those three things in mind, um, I'm going to talk about setting up a staging site for users and implementers. Um, and so I try to introduce this in a way that if you are just a user, um, I, don't, I don't mean to say just a user, but uh, you have limited development knowledge, um, or an implementer, I want to present these in a way that um, someone doesn't necessarily need to know coding in order to achieve. Okay, so the first thing, this isn't really necessarily a step to creating a database or to um, creating a staging site, but um, it's very important. So you need to audit your site. You probably should audit your site regardless. And if you've recently done it, or you're very um, intimately familiar with um, everything that's on your site, if you're very familiar with your hosting and um, what kind of access your hosting um, gives you to the to the various things that um, they're using to run your site. Um, what what um, what service level do you have? Do you, do you have um, a um, a subscription that is going to give you access to creating a staging site? Is it going to give you access to creating your own subdomain? Um, or is your company maybe limiting your access to doing these things? Um, thinking about how busy your site is, um, because one of the things we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking a copy of our live site and putting it somewhere else. So depending on how long it's sitting this some, somewhere else, you might have live things happening on your site. People could be um, adding comments. They could be making purchases if it's an e-commerce site. Um, they could be just adding you know, user contributed content. So all those things could be happening. Meanwhile, you're still on your staging site with a, a copy that's now <laughs> somewhat outdated. 
So you have to think about that um, when, you, when you think about how you're going to push those change them. Are you using version control? Um, if you don't know what that is, is your developer using version control? Um, because if they are, they might have a process already in place. Um, and that'll also sort of give you something to follow when you're thinking about uh, a development workflow or, or just a workflow for doing this. The size of your site. Um, if you're creating a staging site on your existing hosting, um, minimally you'll have to have enough space to host two versions of that website, the live and the staging. Some um, staging solutions actually require that you have enough space to host three because they sort of set up a temporary website while they're um, moving them uh, across. So make sure you know like how big your site is and, and how big your hosting space actually is. Um, another important one is are there any automations on your site? So for example, um, there are some um, plugins or services that do auto emailing where they will send out some automated messages to your users and that will include maybe a link back to your site. So if that comes out on your staging site, it will automatically have your staging URL. You don't want to send that out to your clients. So like, getting really familiar with what's all going on your site, what you have access to, what your environment is, is really important for setting the staging site. So let's look at what are your options. The first one is one that I really like for clients where um, I do a lot of volunteer work and uh, I don't necessarily have time to do a lot of support for them and I want to put something in place where they will be able to take it and, and update it themselves with minimal work from me. Um, so a lot of hostings offer something called one-click staging and um, this is going to be in your cPanel or it's going to be someplace in your hosting um, account or your dashboard that's going to allow you to click a button to create a new staging site and it's going to duplicate live automatically build that subdomain or whatever the new URL is, and then um, give you separate access to that. Um, it's easy and fast, but it's also more expensive because hosts that um, include that sort of integrated solution, um, that takes a lot of support and it takes a lot of constant work, so they're going to be a little bit more expensive. Um, but you can see there, this is uh, WP Engine. Uh, when you're literally logged into the WordPress admin, you see um, a section in there called staging and you see that the button that says copy site from live to staging like that's super simple you push that button and then you see the red button which is deploy site from staging to live and it's red because they want you to think about the things that that i sort of went over when you're doing the audit of your site making sure you know what you're overwriting um, making sure everything's definitely working right uh, before you go ahead and push that button there's a, a good amount of hosts that offer one-click staging. This is not um, a comprehensive list, but depending on what your host is, look into it, see if they offer it. A lot of them do. Um, if your client or you do not have hosting, maybe consider one of these because it's it's the easiest solution and it's the fastest solution. Okay. Um, barring that, maybe you only have. Um, maybe you don't have the level of access to be able to create that from the uh, staging panel. Maybe you don't have the budget. There's also a staging plugin called WP Staging that you can use. WP Staging, you install it right into your live site. And what it does is it automatically spins up a new WordPress install that's sort of sitting inside your live site, but it's completely separate. Um, it's free in the plugins right well. Uh, I believe it does have um, a premium version that gives you a lot more options. Um, and then it also migrates the changes to your live site. So sort of like the WP Engine where it's pushing the red button, um, this one will push your changes over. Um, and it can do um, content changes. I think the free version will just push content changes for you. The pro version can allow you to do a full migration of your site. So that would be if you're doing a WordPress update and um, you're updating a lot of things in WordPress core that you don't necessarily have the ability to cherry pick and push them over, um, you can do a full migration. And then a standalone site. So this would be something that sits in a subdomain or subfolder. 
Um, but the difference between this and the, the plugin is that this is manual. So you're going to go ahead and create a subdomain um, on your hosting manually, um, go through and um, you know, set up your, your DNS and all that kind of thing. If you have a firewall, you, know, you can configure that. But you're going to be creating that subdomain. And then you're going to um, duplicate your life set yourself. And you're going to put it up onto that subdomain. And then you're going to use another solution to take your changes and migrate them or push them to your live site. Um, so this one is a bit more hands-on, but it's a good solution for people that um, are maybe have a, a more limited budget or they want to have more direct control over exactly what they're moving and exactly how they're moving it. So um, this involves using a couple plugins. One plugin that's going to package up your live site into an archive so that you can take that archive and, and basically republish it onto your staging site. So that's one. And the reason that we need that plugin is, among other things, because of that URL issue. Um, so I make your changes. That part is pretty simple. Um, and then, so we have the issue of how do you get those changes back into your live site? Um, one of the more manual ways to do it, probably the most manual way to do it, is to literally just go to your live site and make those changes again. So this would be maybe you were doing um, an update of your theme, and you're like, sometimes when I update the theme, things break. So I'm going to just push the update button on staging, and then everything's good, nothing broke, that's awesome. I'm just going to log into my live site and push the update button there. Um, so that one is um, as easy as, but it can be more time consuming. But there are also plugins that allow you to basically push uh, your site or parts of your site to um, the live server. Um, and then, so I'm just going to go through some of the plugin solutions and just some of the general solutions for this. So for duplicating your site, so this is one of the um, manual things that you have to think about if you are going to be moving it yourself. So basically what's involved here is you create an archive of your site. This will include database one, and then all the files that are necessary to completely rebuild that. So you know WordPress is using a database. You need to package up that database and um, include it with your site files, and then um, have another plugin on the other side that's going to open up that, um, that zip file and create your database, um, run all your files, do that. So, I think I have some examples at the end of this. Um, so then migrating your site. <clears throat> that is um, reinstalling your site onto another server. So when we're talking about duplicating, this is actually um, sometimes called archiving. So um, if you're, you know, you're creating, you have a backup solution in place, that's maybe creating an archive. Check and see if it's saving the database. And also check and see if it's saving your full, full site. Um, I'm not really going to talk about backups in this talk, but you should be backing up your site regularly, and you should be also testing those backups to make sure that you can reinstate them. Um, if you do have a full backup, including the database, including everything you need, you can use that backup to, um, you know, to rebuild it onto your staging site. So the migrating, that's actually pushing it to the new place. Reinstalling on another server, making sure the database works, making sure the URLs are all updated. Um, so the serialized data that you need to find in the place. Um, there is a config.php file, wp-config.php. And uh, that thing that has stuff like the database uh, location, the database password, the database user, those um, are going to change with your new staging site because you're going to have a different database, essentially. So those things have to be updated if you have robots.txt. Um, if you're a developer and you're using any developer tools, um, removing those developer tools, um, changing the error reporting that you know, you've been maybe using to troubleshoot, um, any kind of notifications that you don't want on your public-facing site, if that's your version. Um, and then any caching, uh, security, email automation, um, you don't necessarily want to have caching enabled on your staging site because sometimes caching won't show you exactly what's going on because it's going to be caching. So disabling the caching. Remember that you disabled the caching and re-enabling the caching when you push back to live. 
Okay, so uh, I've been saying sync. There's also another word called merge. There's a difference between those two. Um, and that difference is important when you are thinking about how you would like to overwrite your website. So syncing is basically um, you're overwriting your live site with your staging. You've created the staging site, you've made all the updates. You're pretty sure nothing has changed on live since you duplicated it. So you're free to go ahead and overwrite the entire install basically with your staging install. That's all updated. So that's overwriting everything. Merging is um, a situation where it can be really useful if some things have changed on your live site, like comments, like orders, and you've made changes that don't affect those orders, and you just want to push those changes. So um, this is difficult um, because of um, you can't really merge a database easily. So there are some solutions where you can um, merge parts of it, where you can um, merge, decide what um, files you want to use and merge those. Um, but it's very complex. There are some solutions that are sort of doing it well, um, pretty well. Um, and uh, it's, sort of a, it's sort of an ongoing thing that even developers are looking for a really good solution to. Um, when you have like a development environment, when maybe you have three different people working on a site, and maybe they're all making their own updates to a database, you would like to ideally have all of their updates go into the new database and all not compete with each other and all go into exactly the right places. It's not that easy though. <laughs> so, um, I have some tools here um, that you can use. A lot of them are plugins. So there's Duplicator. It allows you to just create an archive of your site right from your WordPress dashboard. Um, it has a free and paid, paid version. The free version can do, if you have a not so big site, it can pretty much do everything you need it to do. If you have a very big site, you probably want to go with the paid version. Um, it, it basically archives it in a, in a little bit different way. Backup Buddy, um, it's a, it does backups. Um, you can automate backups with that. It's a good backup solution, but it's also um, a good way to create your archives if you want to go with the staging. <coughs> Um, All-in-one WP migration. Um, this is for more larger sites. I don't believe that there's a free version of this. I think that it's only, oh, maybe there's a free version. Yes, um, yes sorry. But uh, the paid version has obviously more um, options in it. It also has WP CLI integration. So if you're a developer, um, you're able to access it from the command line. Um, and then Updraft Plus, same thing. Backups, you're saving it to cloud. You can do WPCLI. A lot of these do sort of the same things. They're at different price points. They, some of them do slightly different things. So really just looking at, you know, maybe trying them all out, looking at the one that works best for you. Um, and then we have MigrateDB, which um, does the database migrations. And this is something where it allows you to do more complex um, database migrations. So if only a few things change in your database and you only want to push those few things, this plugin can help you do that. And there's WP Site Sync. So WP Site Sync is um, a plugin. It does have a free version. The free version pretty much only um, syncs up content, but the um, paid version, it's kind of expensive. It's $130 a year, but it allows you to do very granular sort of um, picking and choosing what kind of things you want to push to your live site. And um, they've got support for a lot of different plugins, um, custom post types, ACF, that kind of thing. Okay, so hopefully this is just going to play. Yay, okay. So this is just WP Sites. I think it's a quick demo that they have um, on how it works. So the, the uh, I believe this, the staging site is on the right, and they are moving some changes from the live site to the staging site. Um, so it happened pretty quickly, but if you see there's two buttons there that say pull in, um, and then there's another one that says push. Okay, well that's the end of it. So that, it was really quick, but basically what you kind of saw was that it um, pulled the changes, and then when you refreshed, you could see those extra pieces of content on the staging site. So that's pretty cool. Um, and another solution, which is really, it's sort of a, a development solution, but you can also use it if you are a Morgan implementer, 
um, is having a local WordPress install. And there's a couple solutions that are out there right now that will set up a custom um, local development environment that's specifically for uh, WordPress. Desktop Server, I believe, was the very first one to offer something like this, and they've been around the longest. Um, basically, you're, you're um, installing software on your computer that allows it to run as a server. So that now you can run your WordPress site right on your computer as if it was a server, like you know, your, your host. Um, Desktop Server is not the only one. There is uh, Local by Flywheel has one, but I'm pretty sure you need to have Flywheel hosting to use it. Um, you don't? No? Okay, so Local by Flywheel is also an option, regardless of your host. Um, and there's, there's some other um, solutions that I've heard are in the works from various hosting companies. So this is a situation where you can make those changes on your, you know, your laptop or your computer and be like, okay, cool, well, it, it actually works. So I've imported my live site into this development, a uh, local development, and the thing works. So now I can go ahead and do it on my live site. One of the nice things that Desktop Server does, and I believe uh, local works also, is a direct deploy. Um, it basically connects to your live site via a plugin, and it can overwrite your entire live site with your staging site. So if you made those changes, you could push it straight up there. Or if you have um, the subdomain solution where you have your staging site is in a subdomain, maybe you can push this to the subdomain. So now you have it on the same hosting, same environment, and you can better um, you know, evaluate if this is going to cause any issues now that you're in your server environment. And then you can um, also push it to live. <clears throat> it's, it's not a solution that I would put in place for just any of my clients um, because it is a little bit confusing, but um, honestly, like desktop server is really super easy to use. Um, and if you're looking into maybe local WordPress development, they have a free version. You can just install it and get it up and running pretty easily, and you can just play around with it. So when I said, what is a local site? It's running on your own computer, um, using software that allows your computer to run as a server. Okay, so all those different solutions, there's a lot of different parts to it, and I gave different solutions for each one. Um, Every one of those solutions kind of depends on what your own situation is. And if you're doing a lot of sites for clients, um, maybe they have different hosting, maybe they have different budgets, maybe they have different needs. That's the fun of freelance. Um, that's the fun of being an agency. Um, you can't always necessarily pick what your clients are already using. So um, one, make a schedule for doing updates. Uh, it's really going to be very useful for you if you at least commit to once a month going in, looking at your site, making the updates, um, and then pushing them to your live site. Um, using a service uh, maybe to track your updates. Um, there are services out there that allow you to uh, basically monitor all the sites that you have, and it'll tell you when you have a plugin that needs updating. When it, um, there's a new WordPress version out and only these two sites are updated to it, and these two are. Make all your updates on staging first. Um, and then never break live. Um, so that is basically uh, the solution that is good for users and um, good for implementers. So now, um, oh sorry, so, uh, so evaluating your options. I kind of went over this when um, we were talking about the beginning, but how much time and resources do you have for maintenance? Uh, if you're an agency that's going to be um, starting up a maintenance plan and you haven't done it before, Thinking about how much you actually have to do this maintenance is going to help you inform you of what solution you're using for this. Your budget, um, how often you're going to be checking for updates, how often you're going to perform the updates, and who is performing the updates. Knowing all these things is going to make it a lot easier for you to put a process in place. Having a process in place um, is really the, the best way to minimize the amount of time you're spent doing these things and to automate what you can. Um, so then just some more things. How many sites, um, people that are governance, like how many people are verifying the changes, those kind of things. Um, okay, so we're gonna look at just some quick uh, basic workflows here. I don't know what I have on time. Um, okay, cool, we're good. 
So I'm um, just going to kind of go over some examples. Uh, we don't have to really go over all these, but I do have this. The slides are going to be up, and I believe that um, uh, WordCamp has these slides up available too. Um, Dipangin, confirm the user rules, tell your user, never update live. We have a staging site for that. Update schedule, um, you know, move staging to live to staging, make your changes, push staging to live. If you're going to do the duplication of the site with the WP staging plugin, duplicate, make your changes, push it to live. Subdomain, duplicate it using um, you know, whatever plugin you want, make your changes, and then pushing that live with any one of the solutions that we talked about. And then local, local, where you can push it to staging, or you can push it to live, or you can make the changes again on staging and live. Okay. So, the developer and developer workflows. This is, um, I, I'm not going to get very deeply into this because developer workflows are a very personal thing and um, they're, they're, the decisions you make are very much reliant on um, what your entire developer workflow is. So I can't tell you an exact staging solution because it really depends on how you're developing your site. There's a lot of, of factors involved here. Um, and the things I'm going to be talking about is not anywhere near exhaustive. I don't even know about all the options that are out there. If you talk to a developer, any developer here, they're probably going to tell you a very different development workflow, every single one, unless maybe they work at the same company. Um, everybody does kind of something different, and that's because uh, everybody works a little bit differently. Everybody has different requirements and different limitations and different preferences on how they like to work. So, not extensive, but um, I am going to go over the things that you need to think about when you are um, making a plan for how your workflow is going to go. And because staging is really part of your development workflow, this is not a development workflow talk, um, I'm only going to kind of glance over those things. Okay, main things to consider. So there, they're pretty much the same as with the users, only I'm using some uh, fancier dev words. Uh, provisioning the staging site to match production. Basically, this just means you have a way to look at all of your server settings, all of your, maybe your WordPress settings, every, all your configurations. You have a way to package that up and push it onto your, maybe your staging site. Um, so instead of manually going through and being like, do I have the same PHP version? Do I have all of these um, permissions the same? You can actually push that up and it'll automatically do that. So that's when we say provisioning, that's pretty much what we mean. Um, another thing to keep in, uh, in mind, sharing keys and configurations um, across the environments and developers. Um, things like keys, uh, API keys, anything like that, that's something that you don't necessarily want everyone to have access to. Um, but if you do have a lot of developers, they do need to have access to them. So thinking about that, um, thinking about the configuration settings that you have um, is also really something that you need to evaluate. The time and content gap between staging and production, again, that's just what's all happening on staging during the time that I've been, what's all happening on live during the time that I've been in staging. And then deploying your changes. Um, okay. <clears throat> Provisioning staging to match production. There's lots of different ways uh, and solutions to do this. A lot of the solutions require that you have it integrated into your development workflow. Um, but I'm just going to go over a couple. So blueprints are one solution. Um, this is where you can create an ideal environment that you're going to be using and reusing over and over again. And basically grabbing that thing and using it every time you start developing a new site. So that means um, there's a lot of benefits to that. Uh, one of which is you have now you have a predictable workflow. So you can work on making that more efficient. You can um, have more people contributing to it because you, um, you, know, you, you know exactly what you're doing. Um, hosting companies like Pantheon, when I say like Pantheon, honestly, there's not too many that offer the, the sort of integrated development that Pantheon offers. Um, Pantheon has something called a, a custom upstream, which is 
their sort of service that you have um, access to when you host with them, that allows you to basically create this sort of blueprint. You can pull that blueprint down to live when you're creating a new site. You can, um, you can push it back up. Um, so that's really useful if you're using Pemkin. WPCLI is a, a command line um, interface and uh, um, plugin that you can use for WordPress. Um, it allows you from the command line to um, you know, create, uh, maybe download a blueprint of your site that has so-and-so plugins configured, has so-and-so settings in place, um, all those kind of things. So WPCLI, WPCLI is um, a development tool also. Um, but it can be used for doing some sort of provisioning. Vagrant, VCCW, um, that is a more um, advanced developer tool. Um, I'm curious <laughs> to know, there's a bunch of developers in here. Does anyone um, want to share what they're using for that? Totally fine if you don't. Um, there's a lot that goes into it. So, Knowing the word provisioning, if you're a, if you're a beginning developer, is going to get you you know pretty far with Google though to be able to figure out what you want to use. So the sharing keys in config across the environments and developers. So like I was saying, keys not necessarily something you want to be, for example, saving into your version control um, in a in a naked to the naked to the eye way where somebody can just look at it. Um, and config, uh, WordPress has a lot of different um, configurations in it, and the, the configurations that are in wp-config.php are very minimal compared to the amount of configurations that are saved in the database. And the way that WordPress saves um, a lot of its configuration is in um, the um, table WP options. And it's not super easy to be able to just go through and pick and know all of these database entries that are only related to configuration that are in the WP options table. So that's something to think about that is, um, you know, you want to look for a solution. Um, things like ACF custom fields, those are saved in the database. You can also export it in a way so that it's saved as a file too. <laughs> Um, things like sending emails, caching, like all those kinds of things, you can turn that on or off. Um, WPCFM is a solution, Locker.io. The guy from Locker.io is here. Um, he gave a talk earlier, and um, the solution that his company offers is actually pretty cool. They do um, cloud, um, basically hosting and encryption for your keys so that anybody can access it without actually having to see what the key it is itself. Um, if you're using Ansible um, for something like maybe Trellis, if you're using Trellis for your um, development workflow, Ansible Vault has a way of storing that. Um, and another way that various opinions on how, how well this works, storing the WP config in the directory above your site root. It's debatable whether this is really a great um, security solution or not. But it could be a way for you not to include that maybe in your um, version control. So the time and content gap. Um, this is, we're talking about syncing things, syncing databases. When you have developers, they're all working on their own version of the database. All the databases have different things on them now, including maybe content, maybe the options table. Um, it's really hard to know what everybody is going to be um, contributing to that database. And like I said, um, merging the databases is not super easy. Um, doing something like continuous deployment, whole other talk, um, minimizes what is all going to be happening on your live site while you're doing staging. So continuous deployment is basically working on very small pieces of um, your project, maybe very small features, and pushing them up uh, on a regular basis. So now instead of having this entire suite of products you're maybe trying to get out, maybe you push one at a time because it only, um, you know, it didn't take, it only took a couple days to develop it, or you know, whatever. Um, syncing your files is something you need to think about. Um, when, uh, when someone uploads an image to, the word, to WordPress, 
Um, it not only saves that actual image in the WB content folder, but it also creates a database entry for that image. So you can't just grab all of your images and FTP them up into um, your WB content because WordPress isn't going to know that they're there because you didn't upload it through WordPress. WordPress didn't assign an ID to it. It doesn't know it's there. And one of the, um, the, the emerging issues with that is because it's assigning an ID to it, if you have three different databases uploading three different files, they're all going to have different IDs for their files. They might have two files might have the same ID. You know, one of them's going to win out. Um, so that's sort of an issue. Uh, Lando is um, a new um, tool that is being used, and a lot of people really love it. Um, I know that Pantheon integrates pretty well with it. This is not a Pantheon. I don't, I'm not getting paid to say this, but um, if you're doing more advanced development, worth looking into. And then for deployment. Basically, how are you getting your um, changes up there? Um, minimally, you can deploy straight from your version control. You can, um, if you have a Bitbucket account, if you are just one developer, you maybe don't have a huge complex workflow. Um, Bitbucket is nice because it allows you to have private um, repos for free. Um, you can deploy your changes straight to live from Bitbucket. So now we can sort of talk about a version control talk. But if you wanted to create another branch for staging, right, and you make all those changes on staging, then you merge them. Once they're ready, you merge them into maybe your production. And now you can take those, those new updates from production and push them up to your live site. Um, some hosts offer um, an in integrated development environment. Um, a lot of hosts offer Git integration right into the hosting. Um, not all, of course, but um, take a look. Uh, it's good to have uh, a hosting company that will allow you to have Git integration so you can do those pushes more easily. Um, lots of lots of deployment tools out there. Again, if anybody um, uses anything, wants to talk about what they're using. Um, when you uh, are a developer for a long time and you find a workflow that works for you, you get very enthusiastic about it and you want to share it with the world. So if you just Google development workflow with WordPress, there are a bunch of people out there that have published all their different workflows and they're very excited about it. They're really happy to share it with people. Um, because when you come up with a workflow that really works for you, it's really exciting and um, it can save you tons of time. It can, it can really save a lot of hassle. So um, people are always enthusiastic to share that. And they are oftentimes are willing to you know, sit down with you and tell them, like, hey, this is super cool. See how it works? You know, even though they're not the people that created that tool, you still get a sense of pride for um, finding an awesome solution. Because you know, it, it takes a lot of work um, to be able to find the one that works for you. So I have five minutes left. Um, that is actually the end of my talk. So um, thank you. Um, so I have this site up on um, SlideShare. But I also do blogging for SiteLock. And I've done some blogging on staging sites. So um, it's the, the blogging I have up there is really only on the user and influencer side. I'm working on doing some more developer kind of blogging blog posts. Um, so please feel free to look, take a look up there. It gets, it gets much more in depth. Um, so I'm wondering, does anybody have any questions? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you've um, set up a standalone staging site on, say, a subdomain, um, how do you recommend the best way to keep it out of the eyes or out of the out of reach of web crawlers? Like using maintenance mode or something? So, I mean, you can at least set up like an HT access kind of level thing where you're having a, a login to that. Um, a lot of the one-click um, hosting, they will automatically do it for you so it can't be found. Um, you, you can put it in maintenance mode. Um, but ideally, you don't want anyone to ever go to that site at all. Yeah. So
So maintenance mode is sort of a solution. Um, updating your, your robots, you know, so it's not, your site's not being crawled, things like that. Um, if you have another idea that you use. Yeah. Yeah. But that is important, and that is something that I didn't really talk about, is you want to make sure that your staging site is not going to be crawled by Google. So um, making sure that it's not findable is definitely something that you need to put in place. Was there yeah. Yeah. Have you ever used Word Mood? Word Mood. That's a Ruby gem. Oh no, I have not. Um, is that something that you use, or is it awesome? I don't know. Oh. I've just found it, and I haven't actually played with it yet. But it, you can post to staging and production and pull push. Okay, so there's a Ruby. There's a Ruby gem. I've never even heard of it. Um, Yep, that's, I, mean, I don't know, but I bet somebody that's using it successfully is very happy to talk to you about it. <laughs> is there anything else? When, when you're using like local by Flywheel, because I'm looking at using it, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I do all of our hosting you know, behind the scenes subdomain. But with something like local by Flywheel, is there a way that other developers from other locations can work concurrently, or do you have to zip it up and share and move it around? Do you know? Anything? There was someone in the back that um, corrected me on local being available to outside of their own hosting. Is that person still here? Can they answer that? Because I personally don't know. I haven't used local. Um, but I do know people that use it, and they love it. Um, it does, it provides a lot more um, developer tools than desktop server. Desktop server provides some, and I know that they're working on coming out with a, a, a major version upgrade, so I don't know what they're offering. Um, but local does have more solutions for development. They're here. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I already them once. They yes. It. Yeah, so like that could be something that um, you could ask them about. I, I don't know exactly. Um, also, I know that you can open it up to invite other people to get onto your machine, but yeah, yeah. so just to view. Just to, yeah, just okay. to view. Yeah, so one thing that one thing that local does do, I think desktop server maybe is in the works of doing it, or they just recently started, is that usually when you have your site locally, no one else can see it but you because it's not on the internet. Um, local has a solution that allows somebody from another remote location to um, look at your, your local site. Um, not really answering your question, but that's what he was kind of mentioning. Yeah. That maybe if you're doing development for a client and you want to say, hey, here, do you want to take a look at this? You don't have to push it up to like, yeah. you know, a, a, a dev server or something like that. Desktop server has that too. What was that? No. Just after the two. Just after the two. Okay. Just after the two now. Um. Any other questions? Okay. Cool. Thank you.